Spirit tells me that I must share this as part of people understanding how to get close to God. Sometimes people think, well, you got to get on your knees and read the Word, and, and all of those things are true. But when you want to get close to God, you obey Him. That is the fastest and best way to get close to God, is by obeying Him. <clears throat> When I was hurt, and I mean really hurt, <laughs> how could I say this? You could not imagine what it is like to have every single person in your life that you love hate you and hate you without a cause. Every person, I don't care who it was, I don't care how, what distance they were, I don't care where they were, they all at the same time hated me. And every stranger hated me at the same time. I had a choice. I could have allowed it to offend me. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. Offense is a choice that we make. And through that offense, we can sin. Because we can get so offended that we could forget that Jesus died for that one offending us. And so, therefore, we will wait for God to deliver us and make them pay or do something with them to stop them from offending us. That's not what God wants. What God's looking is for a change of heart in us, for us to decide that we love him so much we're not going to let that offense get in the way of seeing souls saved, get in the way of because you see, God, God said he is not in the business of destroying. He told that to his disciples. When, they, when the disciples saw that Jesus was determined to go to Jerusalem, and there were those that wanted him to go somewhere else, the disciples said, well, do you want us to call, call fire down from heaven? And Jesus said, you don't understand what kind of God you serve. Because God is not in the business of destroying. He came and died to save. That means, and, and he knew that you were going to suffer persecution. He knew circumstances and situations were going to come to where you were going to really hurt. He knew that. But he also trusted you. Listen to what I'm telling you. If you are suffering persecution, it is because God trusts you to do the right thing with it. And the right thing is to see that other one saved. The right thing is to look beyond their faults and see their need for salvation. Just the way he looked beyond your faults and saw your need for salvation. You cannot treat a one of them, no matter what they do to you. And I mean personal offense. No matter what they do to you, you cannot look upon them as though God is going to deliver you out of their hands. No, my friend. What you want is you want God to save your souls. You want to choose not to be offended. That's what you need. This is part of be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. This is part of that life. I've said, and I've said it again, that obedience to God and the way he is and the way he thinks is what brings healing. It brings healing to your mind, your body, and your spirit, and it will eventually bring healing to your family. There is not a single person in your family that has hardened their heart against you that cannot be softened when they see you respond as a Christian. I've seen it too many times where people followed my advice and, and they won back the people that they lost, the people that, that hated them and turned on them. Because you see, there's so many reasons for that, so many lack of understanding for that. There's you can't, God doesn't want you in a place of judgment. 
where you really think, well, you know, God is not mixed up in your personal offenses. He just isn't. He's not interested in that. He's looking beyond their faults and seeing their need to be saved. For if you listen to what Jesus said to to, uh, God the Father, that he sanctified them all through thy truth, and thy word is truth. Now, when he said that, he meant that was that was everybody and anybody. Don't you realize what he's saying there? He is saying that he sanctified them all through the truth. What is the truth here when he preached it in Matthew? What is the truth when he preached it in Luke? What is the truth that he's talking about? The truth is he died to save that one that is hurting you. And he, that devil has them tangled and he wants to destroy them. But God thought well enough of you and thought that you could be trusted enough to know to be wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. How do you become harmless as a dove if you're not forgiving and you're not waiting there for God to deliver you as though you were some special person? No, my friend, no. It might take years for some of them to to, uh, to finally see it. But if you have enough of Christ inside of you, they'll see it. Believe you me. I have videos out there if you listen to them, and I I think some of them are recent, of how you focus. You focus your focus on Christ. And you know those offenses? This one said this, and that one said that, and this one did this, and that one did that, and behind my back they did this, and behind my back they said that. And all of this comes to your mind, and you need delivered. And you are the one that has Jesus Christ, so he is going to deliver you because all of them are unimportant. No. All of them are equally as important as you are. For God wills that all men be saved. God wills that they be saved. So how is he going to do it? And why does he trust you? He trusts you to think and act like a Christian, like he taught you to. Go into the Gospels and see what he has to say about offenses. See what he has to say about all this. He has taught you those things. And you can't toss him aside and say, well, I'm, I'm going to do it my way. You cannot allow fences, offenses to blind your eyes. You cannot allow your spiritual eye to be blinded. It's got to be focused on Jesus Christ. Jesus would never, ever deliver you and harm them. Listen to what I'm telling you. He doesn't think that way. He doesn't feel that way. That's why he (laughs) puts certain principles in the Gospels. I mean, He just literally put examples and everything else there for you and people like you to understand. How do you draw close to God? Do you honestly believe that if you sing all day, that draws you close? No, my friend. If you honestly believe that if you read the word constantly, 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 all day, that draws you close? No, my friend, that is not. What draws you close is obedience to the word of God. And the obedience he's talking about, which is the most important thing, which are the weightier matters, is forgiveness and repentance. If you don't forgive others, you will never be forgiven. Now, you can, like he said, uh, Paul the Apostle said, though I do this and though I do that, If I have not love, I become as a tinkling symbol. I'm nothing. I have nothing. That agape love, you have to have it. How I obtained it and was able to overcome all of my enemies was by the simple fact that I took Corinthians 13 
And I sat there and I prayed that I become exactly what that was. I took one thing at a time. And I prayed over it. If I cannot love without expecting anything back from somebody, well, I can remember really working with God and how many times I got disappointed and how many times I got hurt and how many times and still came back in the end until I felt the love that I did not just want anything back. Until each step with that love I had to learn. That's how those fruits of the Spirit grow. Okay, somebody just recently said to me, well, be nice. Don't say some of the stuff that you say. Well, you know what? That's different. Being kind among yourself and, and to one another. Being kind with those that are hurting you. Bless those that persecute you and pray for those that despitefully use you. The best prayer you could pray is for God to come into their life and lead them to repentance and bless them. It's and, and and they get saved. It's it's not it's not what you think it is. He doesn't want you to pray to strengthen them to help them because they they would be hitting you with a hammer. That's not what he wants. So my friend, understand, offense is a choice. You can either choose to not be offended and let God work with you, and and. Make yourself worthy of the trust he put you in. He put you in a strategic position to get these people saved. He really did. I can't count to you how many people come back to me after hurting me real bad and telling me that God showed them I was a Christian, that God proved to them beyond a shadow of a doubt I was for real. I cannot count to you how many have done that in the past. And so there are very, very few people that did not come back. Some of those that did not come back, they went in the grave before they could come back. But that didn't mean they didn't get saved because I believe for every one of them in my life, I'm believing they got saved because God does not will for any man to go to hell. So I just wanted to cover a little bit about offenses. Go into the Gospels. See a picture of Jesus and what he did. He did not waste his time being offended at what they did to him. He did not waste his thinking or his thoughts about what they did to him. If that is what's happening in your brain, resist it like you would the plague. Resist it like you would any disease. Resist it. Resist the enemy and he will flee because he's fighting for you. He wants to get you so tangled up in believing that God is going to do something to save you from these horrible people. And these horrible people, they are doing exactly what you would be doing. Don't tell me no, because it's natural. It's the natural man of Adam, everybody would have done what Adam did. Everybody would have done what Eve did. Because it's a natural thing that if you get tempted enough, you do begin to do certain things out of spite, not of hate. And and if you and if you did and if you got saved, you might have done that before or got tempted to it. So I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm only explaining to you what God expects out of you. And God expects obedience. Now you can carry obedience to the letter of the law. You can wear your skirts, your your neckline up to here, your sleeves to here, your skirts down to the floor, put your hair in a bun and make it real long. You can do all of that and still believe that people are going to pay for offending you. And guess where you're going you're not going to be going where you think if you still hang on to being able to judge others and condemn them for what they're doing to you. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I am not saying this about anybody in particular. I'm only saying what God has taught me and how he pulled me through everything. And like I said, I even got to a place where just 
yesterday or day before yesterday, my I was frying chicken, and it bubbled up, and that chicken went on my finger. the The hot oil went on my finger that much. My finger went into that water and that oil, and when I pulled it back out, you know yourself, oil stays until you get it cold. No, it didn't hurt at all, but you could see the oil, and you could see it was bubbling. So, how did I get that way? I got that way through obedience. No matter what anybody did, no matter what anybody said. God knew he could trust me with their soul. God knew that I would not harm them. Because, you know, we harm them when we believe they're going to pay. That's why God said, don't go there. 